Well, thanks everybody for joining us today. I'm Christine Haney, Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Vaughn. Um, and we're really excited to bring this webinar to you through the D&D um, Virtual Spring Market. Um, so if you have any questions or things that come to mind that you want part of the conversation to include, there is a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and you could just kindly type in there or hold it until the end and we'll address that. Some of you did ask questions prior to this um, meeting and we'll also be addressing those um, within the context of the presentation and then um, and at the end. So we'll dive right into the topic, which is lighting demystified, where technology and practical knowledge meets beauty at Vaughn. And I'll introduce our panelists. And firstly, I'll introduce Victoria de Lobanier. Victoria is our executive vice president. Um, and when founders Lucy and Michael Vaughn wanted to open in North America, Victoria came over um, back in 1996 and opened all 15 multi-line showrooms, including our flagship showroom here in the D&D. Um, and, and she also heads up the hospitality arm and knows everything about Vaughn and is very busy. So I'm so excited to have her here with us today and joining us from her home in Connecticut. Hi, Victoria. Hi, <laughs> never too busy for a Vaughn talk. <laughs> um, thank you. And next um, I'll introduce you Tim Coles. Tim is a managing director at Vaughn, also very busy. He joins us from Hampshire. England, um, where Vaughn is also located. Tim has 30 years of experience in the lighting industry, 13 of which are at Vaughn. And he will lead the conversation through the technical aspect, everything from LED to testing to production methods and ceramics, glass blowing, last wax casting. Um, and and he'll, he'll put the pieces together for us. <clears throat> and last but not least, our very special guest, award-winning interior designer, Robert Passal. And now, while Robert is headquartered in New York City, and I'm told um, you're, you are in the city right now, <laughs> um, uh. he, he works all around the globe. Um, some of his projects include an exotic villa in Portugal, a 20,000 square foot compound in Houston, Texas, an art-filled, Manhattan residences. His work spans from residential to commercial to retail. And some of those highlights include the modern restaurant at the Core Club in New York City, a luxury fitness center in Greenwich, Connecticut, and Christopher Corey menswear boutiques. Robert's work has been published in all of the major titles. Um, and should you not know his work, which I'm sure you do, you only need to look um, at your at your screen and, and and at this presentation, and you'll realize you do. Um, so thank you so so much for joining us, all three of you, um, and we'll just dive right in. Here we go. And I'll move our little panel to the side here. Terrific. So Robert was gracious enough to send us photography of his beautiful work. And I really wanted to start the presentation with this image, which is stunning, the balance and, and asymmetry and the, the art and objet, the books, the herringbone floor, the scale of the windows. I, I love so much of it. Um, and I realized that it seemed as though there was no Vaughn in it, and that's just fine. Um, but then when we all got together the other day, we were discussing the slides and what we were going, you know, sort of to get the creative juices flowing for the conversation. And Robert told me that there is Vaughn here. <laughs> so I'd love for you to take over and tell us where we are and your process and, and about the lighting. Sure, I mean, for us and our design, you know, lighting is probably the most, or at least one of the most important elements. And I'm a firm believer in having lighting at different levels and different sorts of lighting. Um, so in this particular photo, inside the, uh, the acrylic column, the, the, the pedestal that you see that uh, 
sort of like giant urn on in the, in the background is one of your uh, Vaughn Puck. And I call it, but it's like an very, uplighter. <clears throat> yeah, uplighter. It's a very, very yeah. beautiful um, little brass square that sits on the floor inside this acrylic pedestal and uplights this urn. So in the evenings, it's set on a timer, it goes on on its own, and it just casts a really beautiful shadow, um, you know, throughout the space. Um, so it, it's it's one of my favorite little lighting tricks to use. You know, we use it we use it in plants. We'll use it behind sculpture. Sometimes we'll just put it behind a sofa, you know, and it will uplight some of the art that's behind it or anything sure. that might be behind it, and it just creates a, a really beautiful little glow. That's great. It, so it creates ambiance, and it's so discreet. I mean. It is behind the table. However, um, it, you know you, you don't even notice it's there. Um, and uh, and and where is this project? It's just so fun to know. Um, uh, this project is Manhattan on Fifth on Lower Fifth Avenue, yeah. and um, it is a building. Uh, the building was uh, it was a commercial space at some point. Uh, about three or four years ago, it was turned into residences. Amazing. And um, this is one that we just completed and uh, soon to be published. Terrific. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> oh, you're um, and so just so that everybody um, who, who's on the webinar with us can see, the, th this is what um, the uplighters are. I think the one that you have is probably the upper left. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. yeah. I think it's discreet and so clean and, yeah. you know, even though it's <laughs> visible through the acrylic pedestal, I, I mean, I think it's beautiful look at yeah um so so these are you know one of the questions that came into us actually prior to the to the um webinar was what is the best lighting and slash bulbs for artwork um and this is one way one way to do that i will say that these bulbs are bright and i very stupidly when i first started victoria gave me the Cheriton uplighter, which is the lower left, and I proceeded to plug it in and turn it on while looking at it. <laughs> so don't do that, people. Um, but they are like little pieces of artwork. Um, anything about the technicality on this or, or, or trend, Victoria and Tim, to, to mention before we move on? Uh, I think one one thing that's important to just point out um, the little cube there that uh, Robert has used the the bulb is actually directional within that there's yeah. um there's like a little cradle so you it, you can actually uh, just um, change the angle of the bulb so it, it if you don't want it pointing straight up in the case that Robert's used he he probably did want it pointing straight up but if for example you're using it on a a piece of furniture and you want it handled out of painting or out of sculpture or something, um, you can just push the, 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 the side of the bulb down slightly and it will angle, um, which really gives you great versatility out of such a small little piece. Um, the the others cool. all can be angled obviously in different ways, but they, they can all be angled as well. Uh, so we tried to, we've tried to build, what we've taken is something that's very utilitarian, which is little uplighters, but we've, we wanted to do, do it with the Vaughan signature is really use very high quality materials and just get the detail right. And I, although I say, my, so, say so myself, I think we've done a good job with these. I think they're, yeah. they're really versatile pieces. Yeah. They're really like pieces of artwork in and of themselves. Yeah. And, they, they, and, and you, don't have to, you don't have to commit to, to, um, installing a, a picture light <laughs> no they're really really versatile I, I i must confess i've got i've got about six of these around my home i i love up light yeah it just gives a really warm light and it gives a real atmosphere um yeah. I, I think it's a, a great way of of bringing atmosphere to a room really simply and Excellent. you know as you say you can move them around you can you can change things up. Um, they're, they're great, and these these are all supplied with LED bulbs. Um, oh, obviously, yep. you were saying about the brightness. If you if you wanted to change the bulbs to a lower lower wattage bulb, a lower output bulb, lower lumen output bulb. Yeah, I think that the the, the, sure you can. the the bulb is great. It was user error. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
so let's move on now. Um, this is the Greenwich Globe light. Um, this is a, you know, a, a real classic alabaster piece um, with the beautiful carving in it and, and this um, bronze, chunky, but refined hardware. Um, and, and right away, I'll, I'll, I'll I'll talk about, um, you know, that, that we've been working with Alabaster and, and Victoria, you and I have done a lot of marketing around it recently. Um, and you've seen a lot of changes in how, how it's used from the, from the showroom perspective and from, from the Vaughn perspective. Um, would you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Well, we, um, going, you know, we, as you said, we've, we've, uh, had alabaster in our collection for a long time. Um, and I think what's changed the most uh, in our favor is the move from incandescent to LED lighting, which we're trying our best to use as much as possible because alabaster scorches if with heat. And so you could never use more safely use more than a 40 watt light bulb close to alabaster or even that would scorch it if it was too close. And so the LED bulbs, which are much cooler and have a, a brighter output for the energy used have, have made alabaster even more usable and give it, you know, allow it to have a brighter um, glow. And I'm sure, I'm sure Robert's got a lot to say about using uh, <laughs> alabaster in general, just because it's so beautiful and has such a feel good factor. So I'll bring you right to a project of, of Robert's here. And we'd love to hear about how you came upon using this, the space, the lighting challenges and, and, and anything about you know, that LED as a light source. Sure, I mean, I, you know, I'm, uh, I'm a classicist by nature and I'm just always drawn to, you know, the classic shapes that a lot of the alabaster, uh, original alabaster is, you know, was carved in. Um, I especially love and have used this fixture a hundred times because um, of the scale of it. I think the scale is quite great. Um, I'm, I like to play with scale. So uh, in this particular hallway, this hallway happens to be square. I love the round fixture in the square space. And I also love the glow that you get from alabaster. Um, it's unlike any other sticks, you know, any other sort of material. Um, in this particular space, you know, it is kind of cool. There's a lot of black and white imagery. Um, it's innately stark. And this fixture just brings, you know, a, a tremendous amount of warmth and a lot of volume to the space uh, mm -hmm. visually. Beautiful. I, I love the contrast of the coolness of the uh, of the decoration and then the warmth of the globe. It's it's a really it's stunning contrast you've got there. Yeah, and all, I mean the light, you know, the light itself is, is also quite warm. So in the yeah. evening, you don't have the sunlight. Um, mm -hmm. It's quite nice just to have this this very warm glow when you're walking through the space. Lovely. Yeah. So Tim, on that note and on LED and alabaster, I was wondering if you could do sort of a little primer on LED because it does inform, you know, the rest of, of what we're talking about. And I would stop my share because I know you have some sort of really good, um, good images that would help explain to our audience here what yeah, it, 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 what it's, I can, what I'll do is I'll just show you um, a couple of little graphics I've got, which is what, 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 we'll, what we'll do is we'll start, we'll start with the bulbs, the bulb technology, if you like, and just, um, just take that through. So if I can just, uh, I'll just get my screen up. Uh, all right. Just uh, do that, that full screen. Is that working okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what um, a lot of the fittings that uh, we produce were originally designed for standard incandescent bulbs, and they and things like the alabaster they're designed to give that all round light. And when when low energy and LEDs kind of first hit the market, they were all using these sort of horrible little chips inside and the, you, got, you didn't really get an all round light. 
thank heavens the uh, the technology's moved on very quickly and we would absolutely pretty much every time recommend using what I'm showing here, which are filament LED bulbs. So basically these are just little, little strips of LEDs, but they're inside a very conventional bulb um, and they're right in the center of it. So you get like you used to get with, a, with an incandescent bulb, you get almost 360 degree, um, what they call lux, which is the, the sort of the spread of the light. So it's not pinpoint light. Uh, mm -hmm. And that I think is so important with, um, with a lot of, uh, a, a lot of um, residential lighting, particularly uh, where you want, this, you want this glow to go around the room. You want it reflecting off the walls. You want it reflecting off the furniture. You, there's a place and a, a time for pinpoint lighting, but most of the time, actually you, you don't want that. So running with these filament LED bulbs, which are now readily available, um, you, know, you can get all sorts of the, your standard shapes and sizes, you can get them dimmable. Um, so it, it, it's absolutely what we recommend. Um, just to try and try and get a little bit of the new language um, for, for those that are maybe still struggling with it or, of we're all used to for so long talking about watts. And, you know, we know what 60 watts means as far as light output. We know what 75, we know 100. What really we've got to do is, is, is let go of that as a, as a terminology. Um, what it actually means is how much electricity it consumes, how much power it consumes. This little chart, which actually, if anybody wants, is, is readily available from us, just gives you sort of an example. So the, I think we had a question in actually, which was uh, yeah. for a 75 watt bulb, what, what am I looking for when I go looking at LED? Mm -hmm. well, you can look across here, 75 watts is around about 1100 lumens. That's right. what you're looking for. Lumens is a measure of the light output, okay? And right. that, that's really what we've got to focus on, not how much power it uses. So as I say, if, if people want so a ready reckoner, we're happy to give them that. But it is really just getting used to the fact that, you know, 40s, 450, 60s, 800, 75, mm -hmm. 1100, 100, 1600. It'll take time. But there won't be a quiz at the end of this. No, 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 no. <laughs> However, um, no. I do know that Victoria also, and we'll get into that in a little while, um, yeah. did, a, did a deep dive into American uh, bulbs and what she's finding out there that works really well for us at Vaughn. So yeah. well, one, one thing just to taking on from there. So obviously how much light output there is, is an important point. I think actually even more important is the color temperature that you choose. Um, and in different environments, you can, you can run with different color temperatures. You know, in a, in a, in a normal um, living room uh, kind of situation, you would wanna run with a, a warm white, something that imitates what the old incandescents used to be. That's basically 2,700 Kelvin. That would be up the warm end of the scale here. Mm -hmm. um, if you're working in an industrial environment, um, a working area, you maybe want to take that a little bit towards the cool white. And daylight is the extreme end. So if I just flip back to the, this, this chart here, um, this is just showing... Um, the, the scale, what, what's called the Kelvin scale. Now, 2,700 is kind of what we would recommend for most, um, most domestic situations. If you're doing lighting in a bathroom or a kitchen, you maybe wanna just take that up a bit to 3,000, maybe even 3,500 because you want that cleaner light. So it's, it's really just getting used to those new ways of thinking, and I'm sure Robert, you're 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 quite uh, quite au fait with all of this now, um, <laughs> sort of, and you can play with it much more than we used to be able to. Um, you know, the, the the different the different temperature lights that you can get out there, you can play with it. You can, in some situations, you can mix it. Uh, you can, you know, use different ones for uplighters, different ones for side lights. 
what is coming now, and it's um, it's not it's not really hit the market properly yet, but Philips have done this, is they, they've got a bulb that gets warmer as you dim it, which obviously an old incandescent light used to do. As you dimmed mm -hmm. it down, it would go from 2,700 down to about 2,000 Kelvin. So you get that warmer glow. Well, Philips have just started launching, and this is the next big wave for LED technology, is, is these, these warm glow uh, LED bulbs. And I think that that's the final thing that was missing from the incandescent was and that as to, you dimmed it, it got warmer. So anyway, that's the, just some just some background yeah. for you. I mean, I think I think one of the frustrations uh, with LED uh, goes back to dimmers because you know there's different types of LEDs and sometimes mm -hmm. you're incandescent with LED and you have to have different types of dimmers. And that just becomes a whole other complicated the compatibility. Yeah, the compatibility. It, it, it is. It's still a little bit of a minefield. Um, I just just something to explain on that. It becomes more troublesome when you're trying to dim just say a single light. Because um, basically the way dimmers work is they they have to they have to detect uh, a load on uh, electrical load. Now, when we had incandescent obviously the load was maybe 100 watts. Now you're talking about a load of four watts. So if you think about what the dimmer's trying to do, it, 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 it's much easier to divide up 100 than it is four in, in simple terms. So if you can put multiple lights on a, on a dimming circuit, that's the best thing to do. The more you put on there, the less problem you get. Um, also, what, what I always say is, it, it's like anything in life, is don't go cheap. Don't go cheap. Don't buy cheap bulbs. You would be amazed the number of people who will buy beautiful light fittings and then they get the cheapest possible bulb that they can find and wonder why they've got, a, and they'll then blame the fitting for the fact that the, the bulb isn't working properly. Um, wow. It's like anything, you know, you, you, if, you want, if you want something of quality, you have to pay for it. And it's the same with the dimmers, it's the same with the bulbs. But I do agree, Robert, it's still got a little bit of way to go for that compatibility to be there. But people like Lutron, their dimmers are pretty good now. They'll, they'll go across the range with most, uh, most LED bulbs. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it is still... It's not a precise science, I have to say, yet. It's a work in progress. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Um, so we're back. I'm sharing my screen again. Are we all yeah. in agreement on that? OK, terrific. Um, so on the alabaster um, theme, Robert, um, you're using a lot of alabaster lately, we've noticed. Um, and this uh, Verona alabaster bowl is something that, that you're, you're using with some frequency too. I don't know if you have anything you wanna say about working with this fixture as opposed to another. Um, the alabaster is also notably quite different in, in the Greenwich globe light as opposed to, to this one. Um, so, so we've used here, uh we're working on a project in Houston and we used it in all of the uh, public spaces so that it was consistent throughout the house and it's a rather large house. Yeah. And our client wanted them to be very white. That's, you know, the, there's white marble in the house and she wanted it to reflect the marble. So Vaughn has been kind enough to um, send us images of the fixtures as they come in and then we've had the client you know approve or disapprove uh you know the, the marble um but again you know it's a very classic fixture this almost works in any environment yeah. it does have a, a deco edge um mm -hmm. but the chain is so beautiful and so just you know beautifully detailed that i think it makes it much more transitional where it works in literally any yeah. space um, again, I do just love the glow, and um, this also creates a little bit of an uplight, you know, depending on how far it is from the ceiling. Um, and it's just something that I, it's very classic, and um, I think it's very well priced, and it's just something that I've, you know, always admired. 
Excellent. That's so, me. I uh, love the ones with the veining in them. Um, I love the well with this particular client, you know, wants them to be as white as possible right. and have as little veining as possible. So yeah. The so, um the manufacturer is, is interesting too on these. Yeah, have tell us a little bit made, about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the the this particular one, um, it's Italian alabaster and um as we all know, alabaster is a, it's a natural material. It's, it's, it's dug up out of the ground um, and it does vary. Um, the color varies, the veining varies. Personally, I, you know, I think that's the absolute beauty of alabaster. It's the same as a, a beautiful piece of wood, wood furniture. Uh, you, you will never see two that are the same. Mm. Um, you will always get that beautiful variation of the veining and that's, it's natural deposits. It's it's basically it's gypsum, it's calcites that are, are laid down over thousands and thousands of years. But the watching the guys um, in the mines, they, they they will chip out blocks which are sort of the size of a car, and then they get divided up and they get um, machined down into these beautiful pieces. But the the thick solidity of the of the alabaster is. It, and it, it varies from piece to piece. You know, this particular piece is actually a very thick, uh, each of those steps is actually very thick. So the way it, the way it um, lets the light through is very different to the globe, which is a thinner alabaster. You get more light through the globe. Um, but as you said, Robert, you get a beautiful up light from this, this as well. So you get a great contrast going on. But, you know, the veining, uh, uh, what <laughs> where Robert explained the fact that we were set the task of, um, of, <laughs> of sending pictures. Tr trust me, that's something uh, we, we we find we have to do quite often with alabaster, and it's something that Vaughan Vaughan prides itself on being able to do. Is 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 we're not treating this as a, a churn out. This is an individual piece for an individual client. So we, we can do that kind of thing. We can we can seek out ones that they're going to like. Excellent. And then um, the Chinim table lamp here is our our newest um, uh, design in alabaster from Lucy and Michael. Um, and we just launched the Chotten collection um, this spring, and this is one of the the star pieces of it. And again, the alabaster looks quite quite different. Um, recognizable but it's but they're different which is really really neat um so okay the zurich lantern this is i think one of our most special pieces you know it comes in two different sizes three different finishes chain rod with shade without the shade um victoria I'd love to hear um, a little bit about, you know, the romance of this and Tim, the manufacturer, because there are so many things about this that are special and it looks so simple. <laughs> well, the scale, we do it in two sizes, but the scale, the smaller one was the was the original and we had, it was the only one in the collection for quite a long lot of years. And I think the scale has been, um, you know very good for a, a lot of places and it gets used over and over and the re one of the you know big contributors to how it looks is the hand balloon glass um you can see just even in the photographs that it has a you know a little not a wrinkle i don't think is quite the right word but some movement to it that shows that it's not a machine made glass insert um, yeah. so they take a long time to make they take um, they're very specialized they have to be extremely even in their you know in the weight on both sides to make the lantern hang straight and um, again it's a you know it, it's it, they're kind of hard to come by we they're very special each one is really special um, <clears throat> for that for for that reason and I know over the years I've 
said to Tim, oh, can't we just get, you know, we sell so many of those and we want, we need them so badly. Can we please not just get it machine made? And he was says, nope, you won't nope. like it. You won't like <laughs> it if you get it machine made. It'll look different and you just won't like it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we stand by the um, very small teams of people who are able to make the glass for us. Um, and just encourage them with <laughs> yeah. um, it, as much love as possible to keep 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 sending us as many as they can. <clears throat> and I've it's, I've heard something that like they have to do them at the beginning of the day because the glass yeah. is so heavy. Yeah, the, the, they can only yeah. produce. There's, it's only the really burly guys in the factory that can can <laughs> make these because that that bit, that bit of glass, particularly on the large Zurich. Um, when you when you've got it in the mold it's a huge great piece it's 25 kilos which is what about 60 pounds i suppose 65, 60 65 yeah. pounds yeah. on the end of a pole you're okay. going you you imagine you imagine doing that and these these guys are operating um you know, with, with one particular glass blower uh, that, that's in portugal so in the summer there it's very very hot temperatures and you're lifting 25 kilos of glass on the end of a rod. They can only do sort of, you know, 20 a day. Um, it, it's, but it, it, that, the beauty of the glass, um, it's funny because on a, on a contemporary product, people don't necessarily recognize it the same way as they do on a traditional product. This is really a modern version of the, the globe lanterns, the traditional old globe lanterns. This was mm -hmm. us taking that, theory and, and bringing a more contemporary angle on it. The glass is exactly the same. It's done in exactly the same way. So you've got that variation of thickness of the glass. As you say, you've got sort of the ripples as it's turned in the mold. It gives it a beautiful feel. And it's hard to see it from a photograph, but when you actually see one in the flesh, you absolutely understand the difference between that and the machine glass. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll move us along to a beautiful installation shot of Robert's. Um, I love this. I absolutely love um, this. It's amazing. I mean, it's clearly a functional space. However, it is, there's so much going on and it's beautiful. The artwork, the stone. So Robert, let, tell us a little bit um, about, about setting the scene. Sure. So, um... First of all, there's various points of light in this space. Uh, the vanity is wall mounted. And so there's uh, there's lighting below it, which looks really beautiful in the evening. And there's also a, uh, a wall washer that, you know, washes onto the wall to light the, uh, to light the art. So what we did was we used that lantern, which I absolutely love. I've also used it on several projects. Um, I love the scale of it. I love the diversity of it. I think it is something that works in very modern projects and brings, you know, an air of like classic design, but still keeps it quite modern. Um, and I just, I love the scale of it. So this is actually the large one in a small powder room. Um, and it's just, you know, really finishes the space. I mean, it would be quite cold without it you know because you've got a lot of stone and then the ceiling and the walls opposite that focal wall all of the rest of the space is done in a uh, a very dark uh venetian plaster um that does have a, a, a highly polished beeswax on it so when that lantern is lit you get the reflect you can literally see the lantern in the walls um it reflects back at the walls so it you know it's a very important like center point in that space. And it does bring that juxtaposition of which is what I do is, you know, bringing contemporary environments and, and, and I'd say classic environments together. Um, and it, it, it does the trick every time. It's so great. I, there's something also wonderful about um, the conversation of the brass in the, in the shade and the fitting and something in the, the Stone, and then the, the artwork, the green of that turban is yeah, I mean, I, a beautiful I heard, piece. I don't love looking at light bulbs most of the time, so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm grateful for that shade. Um, I also like the light, and the brass creates this incredible warmth. 
um, that, you know, just radiates throughout that space. Yeah. How do you, you brought up um, using such a large fixture in a powder room, which is typically, you know, a, a small kind of interim place. And I, I think that that's such a great, um, you know, only a real expert would know that that works. <laughs> um, yeah. Could you just talk about scale of lighting in small spaces and, and how that might yeah, I mean, I, play? That's great focal points in Granter. I mean, that, that art. So I, I don't remember exactly what the, the measurements are, but I'd, let's say this outer room is five by five. Um, yeah. You know, that photograph on the right hand side is 50 by 60. It's huge. Mm -hmm. It and so, you know, to, to, to complement it, I've used that large lantern. And I feel like if, if I use the smaller one, it looked like a little small lantern and, you know, and sort of the space feels grand, even though it, it is petite, yeah. um, but it's the way that you create focal points. You know, it, it is a visual and all of these larger elements create impact. I mean, if you're looking for a, a minimal environment, well, then I probably wouldn't have used you know, any sort of like ceiling pendant, I would have just, you know, done recessed lighting or like done, you know, minimal sconces. But this was done to create impact and to create warmth in a, in a, in a you know, a smaller environment. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you for, for expanding on that. Totally. <clears throat> um, this is a, this is a, a table lamp that we do so well with, right, Victoria, the Aswan? Absolutely, yeah, we love this. It's, we love the scale of it. It's much bigger than, you know, <laughs> you might think of the lamp you need, but really the lamp you need is overscaled. It's really, you know, it, it's glamorous to have a big lamp, I think. I yeah. agree. Um, it, it, it brings something, it brings something else to, to the party and it makes the light higher than you are, which is also helpful. I find in a lot of time, a lot of um, cases. Yeah, and it's just I love the scroll handles and the design on it and the shape. There's nothing I don't know about this actually. But yeah, I love how it is uh, very refined, but up close it has a bit of rawness to it, and yeah. it doesn't it doesn't feel too fussy, you know, in, in yeah. a space. It feels just right in an environment. Um, and one of the things I do love about Bond lamps is that they don't feel commercial. Um, there are a lot of vendors you can buy lamps from that, you know, lamps have a very distinct personality. I feel like lamps and chairs are two of the things in a space that really have a very, very distinct personality. And, you know, lamps, you can dress up with lampshades. You can dress them up, dress them down. Um, I know in the next photo, you'll see how this particular lamp was dressed up. Yeah. But yeah. I lamps as uh i think of it as if you were getting dressed uh like a you know it's the jewelry it's the jewelry in the space i love um, that and so i if you christine if you flip to the next photo yeah, absolutely um you'll see how you know this particular lamp was dressed up in a way where we used a holland and cherry linen uh to make the shades and it played off this watercolor mural that we had done in the space um, it's, uh, everyone always asks about the wall, uh, yeah, the wall incredible. was a watercolor rendering that was done by Black Crow Studios, which we turned into a digital wall mural. So, um, but back to the lamps, you know, you can dress this up or dress this down. We've done these lamps with raffia shades, you know, in a, in another Hampton space and they look fantastic. Um, you can, you can make it whatever you want it to be, but if you, you can see the scale, I mean, this yeah. partic particular bedroom is 25 by 25. It's huge. So if I had these little petite lamps and do this giant bed in this giant room, mm -hmm. you know, they'd look like little tiny, they, they, there'd be something wrong in the space. Yeah. Uh, these just ground the space. And again, you know, if you look at the details of these, um, I get, I'm assuming they were cast from from a, some sort of rattan lamp or something because you know you can see a little bit of the rawness, which is what mm -hmm. I like. About it. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't look just like a. I'm going to flip back to the product shot just it's so not, people can see that. Oh, I mean, it it feels like you know hands have touched this. 
Yeah. Well, they, they have. <laughs> uh, the, 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 the basic shape is cast and then the, 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 the um, sort of embossed pattern is actually hand pressed in with uh, like a little stamp, a little uh, hand stamp. So again, and it's done in a very um, loose way. So you get this beautiful kind of artisan feel to the piece. And again, each piece does look slightly different. So it, it although the, the body is cast to a specific shape, you get each one has, has its own little kind of personality because yeah. you've, you've got this individual way the pressing and you, you, you can get a feel, you watch, you watch um, the ceramicists doing this and they have, they have a love with what they're doing. You know, they are masters with it. They, I've tried it myself and it looks terrible. <laughs> uh, it just looks awful. <laughs> Uh, but they go dum 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 dum, and suddenly it just looks perfect. Um, yeah, it, it's just artistry, quite honestly. Yeah, that casual randomness of it is not random. <laughs> no, not a, no, no. But going back to the the room sets too, you can really see that sort of rustic quality of it in a way coming out, um, like you were saying, Robert, and it is in really perfect conversation with the the Seville glass chandelier which is also Vaughn in this space and very commanding in scale I didn't you know you, the room must be huge you floated the bed in the center which is also so glamorous to, to go back to um, Victoria yeah, the bed is oh. something and, and it was based on a sofa so the back of the bed is basically a sofa uh, which allowed you to sit up in bed and read and you know function as if you were sitting on the sofa with your legs extended yeah, um, I want one. I want one. I know. I know. You're never leaving that room. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Amazing. We, yeah. It, it's it was it was a it was a fun space to design. Um, I love the, the sculpture, the the head, the next to the next to it too. That has a fun interaction. Yeah, it just brings a little originality and a little yeah. you know a little bit of that well traveled life to the space. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And the next photo, I think, is the same space. Yes, yeah. Another Vaughn, another Vaughn lamp. Yeah. Uh, again, you know, it brings great color to the space. That particular lamp has great texture. It has almost like a little bit of a modern mid-century feel to it, but it yet still feels traditional. And, you know, it's it, it rides the line between traditional and contemporary, and which is why I liked it in this particular space. Mm -hmm. And the color of that turquoise is fun. Um, yeah. I feel like everybody in this showroom threatened to, to buy that lamp <laughs> themselves. I don't know if anyone ever did. Um, and the glaze is the glaze is is truly special on it too. So we'll we'll look at a a close up of a of another um, ceramic lamp um, that. Uh, Tim, if you wanted to talk about the glaze, and I think, is this a Stoke-on-Trent piece just like the Mimizar? Yes, that's right. Yeah, it, it, it's yeah. using the same the same glaze technique as, mm -hmm. as the one in, in, in Robert's setting there. Um, they're, they're translucent glazes, so um, you, you, and you get this layering, and they're, they're very drippy kind of glazes. So this is again, each piece will look slightly different. We're, we're randomly putting this glaze on, and as it goes into the kiln, it, it melts and it drips down the piece. So you get this beautiful mix of seeing the, the stoneware underneath. You know, you can see sort of in the lighter areas there, there's very little glaze cover. And you're, you're seeing that the, the, the body of the lamp underneath it right the way through to the dark ones. Now this, this has sort of an ocean deep ocean kind of feel to it with all those different colors of blue going on. I, I, I love these glazes. They're um, sort of semi-reactive glazes. So they, 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 they um, if you lay one glaze on another, it's not the case here, this is actually just one glaze, but if you lay one glaze on another, they do all sorts of different things. But you get that beautiful thing where every piece is individual. And that's something we we love. And the, the the actual body on this particular lamp is stoneware. It's not earthenware. It's stoneware, which is a much higher fired uh, base material, which then allows you to fire the kiln higher with the glazes, so you can allow them to drip further. 
So there's, there's real, it, as you say, they're made in Stoke-on-Trent. Um, mm -hmm. What we in the UK like to think is the home of ceramics, but I'm sure the Chinese would argue with us. Um, but uh, it, it, it's beautiful <laughs> techniques and very traditional. Yeah, I like excellent. That. I'm going to, um, Robert, um, go through some of the other beautiful um, images that you gave to us. And if you just wanted sure. to sort of comment on things and people can think about if they, I'll check the question and answer box and see if we have more. Um, we have a couple of other things to address that came in before the webinar and um, sure. excellent. Where are um, we? <laughs> So we're in uh, West Chelsea in New York City. It's, it's a townhouse that we had done. And, um, you know, behind the chair on the right hand side, you'll see a, a small brass floor lamp. And infused throughout the bookcase are small lamps um, that we use to bring, you know, a little bit of surprises, uh, surprise lighting to the space. Um, it just, instead of having, you know, recessed lighting shining down, I just love having a little bit of a glow. And again, you know, for me, it's important to have lighting at different levels. So this particular room has no overhead lighting and it's just lit with wall sconces, floor lamps and table lamps, which um, I've, I've had two requests like within the last year like for no overhead lighting in some spaces or minimal, very, very minimal overhead lighting which I absolutely love. And so I feel like maybe there's a push towards going back to like having more natural lighting in the spaces. Interesting. That's really interesting. Uh, this is a space that does have overhead lighting. Mm -hmm. um, it has cove lighting. It has some very, very um, refined recess lighting. Um, we worked with Nathan Orsman on this project, who's a well-known lighting designer here in New York City. Mm -hmm. um, there is a beautiful chandelier and there's just various points of lighting. Um, one of the points of interest that has nothing to do with lighting is that the mirror over the, uh, over the mantle is actually a TV. So, oh, cool. you know, this was a space where, you know, who wants to look at a big black, you know, ugly TV. And, and, but that's a beautiful um, one. So we work with a company called Sura uh, who produced this TV for us. And it is a one piece, it's not like old technology. It's the TV is actually incorporated into the glass and the glass is just inserted into the wall. Wow. Amazing. Crazy. <laughs> it sounds nerve wracking almost. <laughs> I couldn't, I don't know if I could watch that install. <laughs> There's a lot of planning involved, but I mean, <laughs> you turn that TV on and people are just blown away. It's shocking, right? This is so so beautiful. The walls and the tell us about the the walls. So this here. is a, gorgeous. Uh, it also has no. Uh, it has a chandelier, a central chandelier, but there's no recessed lighting. Mm -hmm. uh, I love incorporating seating areas and dining spaces because I feel like it gives guests an opportunity to get up from the table but still be a, a part of the conversation. Um, right. And what we did was, you know, which seems uncommon for a dining room, is we used. Uh, we used floor lamps uh, in, in the space. And there's also some table lamps on the sideboard. But I'm just, you know, I provided these because it's, a, it's an unconventional way of thinking about lighting spaces. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, this is a space also, uh, it's very, very little overhead lighting. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we use small floor lamps and uh, there's also lighting in the bookcases. Uh, there, there's a there's a there's a fair amount of lamps in the, in the room as well that you don't there's, see here. There's some cool reflection too from that high gloss. Um, yeah, it's, I love, I love treatment. The, it's it's brave, but I love it. The high gloss, I think it's yeah. fabulous. Yeah, it's actually a little bit yellow when you're on site. This looks a, a bit bright. It's it's more of a like a cerulean blue, but it, yeah. yeah, it's we you know we use we use lighting in, in different ways here, and again, very very little overhead lighting. Beautiful. Uh, again, you know, this is a space, no overhead lighting. We used a lot of floor lamps and table lamps throughout the space um, just, to, just to create glows. There's actually another of your up lights uh, behind the screen. Oh, so wow. There's two up, it's a four panel screen that we had, yep. we, we had commissioned. 
And so there's two of your puck lights, which is why I included this photo that are behind the screen that are on a, uh, like a foot dimmer. So you just tap mm -hmm. it with both the light. Excellent. So great. Um, oops, what did I do here? Oops, now we're looking at <laughs> how odd. Sorry about that. Um, so let's see, are there, there, I don't think there's, we do have, okay, so we have a question um, again about um, LED and, and we sort of addressed it a little bit at the beginning, but I know, Victoria, I hate to segue so quickly into this, but I do want to address this and then we'll, we'll, um, we'll, we'll go back to Robert for a few minutes with some of the questions directed for him. But we were talking about um, LED bulbs and sort of 70 watt, like what is that like? And Tim has that great um, chart. But something you recently did um, some research into what the bulbs are that, you know, in all of those rooms that we just looked at with Robert, you know, those all are going to take different bulbs and different lumens to create balance if you're using, especially in that one of those last images, Robert, of the bookshelves with the different um, lamps within it and how that balances out. I mean, that's, that's real. Um, Hard, that, that, that's, that's a hard piece of work. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think sometimes it's a little bit of trial and error, but I think the color temperature of the bulbs, if you keep those consistent, you might want a little bit higher light output from one, and one from another to another. Um, so I, was, I do always look for that 2700K Kelvin light because it's, uh, and a good color to live with, you know, particularly in your living space. Um, and I was looking for myself recently, the 75 watt question that came up because I've got a relatively classic arrangement in my living room of about four different table lamps and a floor lamp. Um, and they all had different things and they're a bit hopeless. And some, I even had some of the curly whirly, um, uh. Yeah, and actually, the, yeah, okay, they're not too bad. They're not too bad, but I did have a couple of those, and I thought I've got to redo them. Um, so I set off on a on a on a quest to find seventy five watt equivalent LED bulbs and which ones I liked, and and also for my bedroom. And I ended up the the sort of short story is that I ended up with a Philips bulb. They do a, a twelve watt, um, eleven hundred lumen. It looks like this. I have one right here. It looks. I don't know how my lighting. Like a light bulb. Uh, the window, yeah, it looks like a light bulb. But what you probably you can, can't really see is that the unfortunately the bottom half of the bulb is um, solid, which is I guess the driver is in there. Um, um, but on a it, it 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 actually the light diffuses very nicely, but they dim beautifully. And I did buy some cheap ones, so I learnt my lesson. Um, <laughs> And they, I, on my dimmer, they, they flickered and they were horrible, but these Philips ones are great. And um, they are, they, they do say on the box 75 watt equivalent, they're 1100 lumens. Um, and they say dimmable and they say 2700K. So once you spot them, I got them at Home Depot because I did order a bunch online and I couldn't find these. And all those went, went back and I went to Home Depot to do a, a good look through there and um and these are the best the definitely the best ones i found but i also recommend if you've if you're using lampshades you know fabric regular fabric lampshades that you use an opaque bulb yeah particularly yeah. if you're using a little clip shade on a little wall sconce or something mm -hmm. because if you use a clear one the the sort of bones of the lampshade will reflect through the light and you won't, won't like that. Yeah, all, um, all those filament, all the LED filament bulbs are available generally with a, yeah, it's a, 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 as well. a, a frosted yeah. version as well. So Yeah, but if you're going to actually be looking at the bulb because it's in a chandelier or a globe or, you, you know, somewhere it. where you're actually going to be seeing the light, the light bulb, then go with a clear one because that looks prettier. Yeah, I, I just want to reflect on what Tim was saying earlier with, you know, provide the best light bulb. Um, I think, you know, the quality of the light in the space is so, so important. Yeah. And also, I feel like based on 
you know, conventional light bulbs, the LED bulbs seem quite pricey. But if you think about the long term, right, they're there to last 10 years or so. So, sure. you know, so that at a minimum, um, you know, you, you just have to think about how many bulbs you would replace in the course of, of, of those years. Um, but I feel like the prices have been coming down and the technology has definitely been improving. It really improves yeah. all the and time. Also, the amount of the amount of electricity you're going to use that there's, there's big savings there. You're you're using yes. you're using only ten to fifteen percent of what you would use for a normal incandescent bulb. Um, incandescent bulbs, ninety percent of the energy went to heat, not light. So you you've got something that's so much more efficient. So the costs, as you correctly say, Robert, the upfront cost seems a little steep but actually when you when you look at the the lifetime of the the bulb actually that you're not paying that much more yeah right. and the energy that's very true yeah yeah, yeah. well we're about to, to wrap up i have i have uh one one more question for robert which is what what would you like to see change in lighting design whether it's technological or or design based and, and do you see it happening? Are you already doing that? Um, what's, your, what's your prediction and wish for future? Um, you know, I think lighting, in, it, as far as design is concerned, is one of the things that's progressed the most in the shortest amount of time. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, the introduction of LED, I mean, look at all these incredible fixtures that we have now where you don't see bulbs or you don't see light or they're so sculptural or, um, so I think lighting is, has come such a long way in, you know, such a short amount of time. Um, one of the things that I, I mean, whenever I lecture, people ask me like, you know, if you can do one thing in a house, you can only do one thing in a house. And I always say, I would install dimmers, you know, for me, like dim, having dimmable lighting is, is one of the most important things because yeah. you can get a mediocre, okay space, correct? Um, sorry, oops, but did I lose you? Bite it correctly, drop some flowers in and have it just become, <clears throat> you know, really magical. Um, if you think about, you know, sometimes I'll talk about uh, like nightclubs, right? Mm -hmm. Nightclubs lit so dimly and so in such a sexy way. But, mm -hmm. you know, when you turn on all the lights, when they're cleaning the space, they're horrible, you know? <laughs> That's true. And so, you, think, you obviously you obviously stay too late, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get those nights. Um, well, I've, I've been thrown out them. too. I think you know, including dimmers, you know, me there. I don't particularly know if your lamps have dimmers, but you know some of the, some of these companies now are incorporating dimmers, you know, on the switches, which is yeah. fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's just it's a wonderful thing to. You know, be able to sit next to on your sofa and be able to read or entertain and just really just you know turn the lights down a little bit yeah um so i think you know the technology and lighting is just has has just is just incredible yeah. um we've been using for recess lighting we've been using all the trimless lighting mm -hmm. and we've been using squares or rectangles and it's just beautiful you know mm -hmm. they just become an integral part of the they architecture are. yeah to have all these like trims and frames and two tones. And um, it's just, I think advances in lighting are, are just really have been incredible. That's excellent. That's such a, such a great comprehensive um, response to it. Um, thank you so much. Um, I know that we do a lot of, you know, when you're talking about all those different lighting sources, I'm thinking about all the testing that Vaughn does the EMC testing, Tim, you know, to make sure everything is compatible and that the dimmers aren't going crazy and, and, and all and interference. Um, and, uh, and the things that, that we need to continue to do to support work that's so sophisticated, like what you're talking about and what you do. So, um, well, look, thank you so much, everybody for joining us today. Um, Robert, uh, it was such a treat to have you. Um, okay. Thank you, Robert. Thank, Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Robert. It's getting Thank late you. for Tim in England, Victoria. No, I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Thanks again, and we hope everyone enjoys the rest of market um, and and come see us at the D and D building. We're here with our regular business hours and and lots of new things to see. Thanks again. Great.
Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Yes.